Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with video number five in our series of five videos of my top five versatile card making products from Penny Black's recent releases. And today's video features our all-in-one oval die. I love this die. If you saw our video about our all-in-one hexagon die, this is the same concept only a totally different look to it. And so before we begin, I just wanted to mention again, what makes a product versatile to me? What do I mean when I say that? First, it makes stash more usable by giving already owned stamps and dies a home. So I'll be doing some stash busting in this video. Or it can make new items more likely to be used because it gives them a home. It can work for multiple seasons or occasions. It coordinates with multiple styles from cute to elegant. It's easy to use. This is especially true for this one. And it has the classic look and style. So it's not overly trendy. So here is what this die looks like. It is just one die, which I love because you just have to crank it through your die cutting machine one time and your whole card design is done. You can then fill that oval with whatever you want from your stash, from new products. There's even room down below to add a sentiment. So I am doing a little bit of stash busting in this video. I went through and found some of my favorite floral stamps by Penny Black that have cutout dies available. They're the Abloom set and the blossoming set and I've stamped them onto uh, Canson 140 pound watercolor paper using Memento Toffee Crunch ink. I stamped a whole bunch and painted a whole bunch assembly line style so I'll give you a look at one of those here. I'm painting using Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. I have um, those on the palette there that you can see. Off to the side off camera is a paper towel and a cup of water and I'm just going to paint these in. Now I do have a video where I go through in much more detail, much slower about my watercolor process and I will link that for you down in the YouTube description box below. But essentially what I like to do is I pick up the reinker, that paint from my palette, totally concentrated, and I put that down wherever I want my color to be the darkest. I then take my paintbrush after I've put it where I want it to be the darkest, rinse it off in the water, pat it mostly dry on the paper towel, and go back and blend. So here I'm putting down that color where I want it to be darkest. I've rinsed off my paintbrush, patted it dry, and I'm going back to that edge where the darker color ends and blending it out. Now if I want to go back and add more color like I've done here, I can do so while it's wet. Or while it's wet, if I need to lift some color, I just go in with a clean brush that I've patted dry and lift up the color like with a thirsty brush. I like to put my darker color wherever I think petals would be like overlapping another petal. And as you can see on this petal, if it is in the front, I often will leave the edges of it white so that that creates even more dimension and life in that image. Before I move on to another petal, if it's right next to one, I will heat it with my heat gun or skip around on flowers so that I don't have two petals that are wet blending and bleeding into each other. I also did a few of the little details as you can see there. I outlined at the very beginning of the video using a Pit Artist pen, that black so those stamen in the middle of the flower. I did that with a Pit Artist pen and an extra small journaling tip any waterproof marker with a fine tip will work for that. Now here I'm putting down some evergreen bow and then I'm going to put in a touch of forest moss distress ink on top. That's my favorite combination for flowers. All the colors, all the ink pads, every supply I'm using is listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. So now I'm ready to assemble my cards. I've done all that painting and I've cranked through this all-in-one oval die that is so versatile several times and I'm going to add my sentiments down at the bottom so it does leave a little extra space below that oval and I'm going to heat emboss this using white embossing powder. So I stamped it using Versamark ink in my Misty stamp positioning tool. I'm going to sprinkle that with white embossing powder and I will heat that to set. And I'm going to, there you can see all the pieces, one crank through the die. I'm going to put a little bit of Toffee Crunch ink that will be behind these oval pieces. And then I'm going to use Lilac Posies Memento ink 
to ink over this piece. So I wanted a really rich saturated color. That is why I'm starting with some colored cardstock. Just saves your hand a little bit so you don't have to do quite as much inking if you know you want it all a solid color. But I still want an ombre look so I cut it from the lightest color and I apply my ink towards the bottom and then working my way up with less pressure as I work my way up and that'll create that really pretty dark to light look. Just a very light pressure there up at the top. Now here's that oval. It's going to fit perfectly in there. It's going to be perfectly in the center because it's part of that all-in-one die. And I'm just going to do the same kind of inking on that and I love the look of that. Now I also die cut some stems here. I'm just, I cut them from that same pink and I'm going to color the stems of them with a marker and then I have a fingertip dauber with that lilac posies just to add a little inking on top of these. These then will match that uh, background paper perfectly. So there'll be kind of a subtle um, texture, tone on tone look as I fill that oval. So that is what I just love about this all-in-one oval set is that um, you can fill it with whatever you want. So here I've got those inside my oval and I put foam tape around. I want to pop this up. That other piece is flat on the card. I just fit it in there. It will fit perfectly because it all cut at the same time. And the card is complete. It is that simple. Uses up your stash. You can put whatever you want inside of that oval. You can use it any time of year. I also wanted to show you here, you can add some stenciling with this. So this is our background basic stencil and I've just centered it over that um, die cut piece. And I'm just going to do a little bit of inking around the edges. I'll put a little bit of painter's tape to hold it in place. And I'll grab my toffee crunch ink and just ink these corners very lightly. Just another way that you can sort of jazz up this die if you want to. Now stay tuned at the end of the video I'm going to show you lots and lots of ideas for how you can use this um, all in one oval. But isn't that pretty? Just like that. Just adds a little bit more of a layer on top of there. And you can see that on the card. These are all standard size cards, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'll put a little inking behind that will just peek out when I add that oval piece. And then again, I can grab those flowers that I already have stamped and painted and position them on the inside. And I did pop up the oval and the flowers and added a few leaf die cuts. So following this sort of stash busting, um, I was on a roll with this oval die cut. So I'll share with you all the cards I created with this particular design. The, I love the piercing on this. Again, you can use it any time of year. So you could fill this with Christmas. If you're making Christmas cards, you could put Christmas die cuts in there. You could fill it with critters. You can use it really for anything. So just some different color combinations. And then this is um, just more of that inked background and mostly white with a pop of color for the flowers. And I have one other like that. And then here are even more card ideas for this all-in-one oval. So I really, when a product is versatile, I want to keep going back to it again and again and I certainly did with this all-in-one oval die. Here I've used just that oval piece. So I have die cut that, I put a little backer sheet and I have popped it up on my card and it's great for smaller images. So if you want a smaller image to be the focal point on your card, you can put them in that oval and then the sizing all seems to work out. I followed the same sketch for these four cards here. So I've done our rounded embossing folder at the top a little piece of cardstock to cover that seam and then put that oval with the um, images and a little touch of die cutting with them just to enhance them a little bit and a sentiment at the bottom. This is a really fun sketch to follow and I think that oval just makes it. And again, a great way to use those smaller images that we love, but sometimes it's hard to find a way to get them onto a card. 
Now keeping in the same idea of just using the oval, that's what I've done here, but you can move that around then wherever you want. So I've moved it down to that right hand side a little bit lower, and I've spotlighted my sentiment inside of the oval and put my other stamping around it. Now here I've used that main piece without that center oval, so it gives you a little bit bigger window to put larger stamps and just another look. But again, it's so easy to do because you just crank it through one time. <laughs> now here I've cut some rectangular panels, put them over the oval part, but I'm just getting that lovely scallop and piercing that goes around the outside. So as you can see, lots and lots of different ways to use this all in one oval. I'd love to know what is your favorite way, what card in this video was your favorite way of using that all in one oval? Leave us a comment down in the description box or in the uh, comment section below. And I just want to thank you all who have left such kind comments and have been following along for this top five versatile card making product series. Be sure to subscribe so you and hit that bell notification so that you're notified when our next series begins and you don't miss any videos from us. Thanks for watching.